Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria, the garden city of Canada here on the west coast. I hope everybody is having a great week so far. Welcome David. Hi Janiel. Welcome to our members. Hi Hong Van. Gatspell, Sibin, nice to see many students in the class. Today we are looking at IELTS speaking part one. And of course you want to always begin with a band nine in part one. You want to speak, speak like an expert right from the beginning. Um, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. Uh, for the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you prepare for your next exam, to get those high band scores. Our academic IELTS website looks like this at aehelp.com with this blue background. We are an official British Council IELTS Registration Center and certified British Council agents. Uh, you can click this big red button to join our premium package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access. And because this is a speaking class, I want to show you something real quick here on the website that you can use for free. So you can create a My Student account. You can create a free account. Um, just sign up. And... Um, then once you have your account, uh, you have this uh, student partner speaking and you can click on the student partner speaking. I accept and start speaking. Up pops another page and then you will get this page where you will find other students who want to practice their speaking. Uh, right now we have Kevin uh, in here and you can video chat and audio chat. So check that out. Uh, and then uh, we have our general IELTS website at gieltshelp.com. It's the same idea, but a green background. And again, you can click that big red button to join the premium package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access. Okay. All right. Um, so we have a little bit here in the beginning. Uh, somebody with a Cyrillic name, I can't read it. When I passed my previous IELTS exam, the examiner didn't allow me to say the phrase, please call me by my first name. After he heard my surname, he continued to the next question. Yeah, you have to be fluent. When I did my exam, they definitely let me say that. So when I did my exam, I said, please just call me Adrian. And they're like, sure, Adrian. Okay, so uh, it depends on the examiner and the fluency, but you want to be really, really fluent uh, and you want to show fluency from the beginning, okay? All right, and we're going to talk more about these tips and strategies on what to do right away, okay? All right, um, so we have apps uh, that are connected to our websites, of course, Academic IELTS Help and general IELTS help get those apps from your app store. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore A help or G IELTS help. And if you have questions, you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. And you can also get our exam books from Amazon. Just search for A helps academic IELTS or G helps general IELTS on Amazon to find our exam books. All right see lots more members in the class. That's great. It's good to see. Being studious is definitely a cornerstone of success. All right, everyone. Uh, so we have a full week of live streaming coming up. Um, and uh, here we go. Uh, we have speaking today, part one. Tomorrow we'll have reading for members. Uh, followed by task two writing for everyone. And then we have more lessons all the way until the 29th. So check that out. Okay. All right. Um, so this is a speaking class and we want to speak and repeat. So uh, make sure to not just type in the chat, but actually use your English voice and speak throughout this class. So hopefully 
you are in an environment or context that allows you to speak, that allows you to enunciate, just like what I'm doing, and you need to copy my pronunciation, my intonation uh, as much as possible. If you miss some of it, that's okay. This lesson is recorded, and you can go back and review later, okay? All right. Uh, Ashura Hien, good luck on your academic IELTS exam this Saturday. I hope it goes uh, fantastic for you. And uh, McAfee Song, uh, congratulations on your band seven in your speaking. Uh, you are very welcome. Please send me a testimonial uh, at my email when you have a minute. I would love to get that from you. Okay. Uh, Big Smoke, your voice um, matters in the IELTS to the extent that it needs to be uh, clear. You need to have good intonation, so you're, you do need to have inflections and deflections in your communication, uh, but it doesn't matter what your voice actually sounds like, so that's not so important. You just need to be comprehensible, okay? All right, um, so let's get into this. Um, when you go to your IELTS speaking exam, your speaking exam will be separate from your listening, reading, writing. Uh, it will take about 12 minutes to conduct the interview, but the entire speaking experience uh, will take about an hour and 35 minutes. Why? Because you should arrive to your IELTS speaking exam one hour before it starts, okay? This means you have about 40 minutes to find another uh, candidate and practice some speaking with them, okay? So just a couple of quick tips uh, before we get going here, all right? So uh, you're speaking again, it's separate. So speaking total time is approximately uh, one hour and uh, 35 minutes, okay? Your actual speaking, don't panic, is only a 12-minute interview, but why? Okay, let me break it down for you. So um, A, you arrive uh, one hour before your interview time uh, starts, okay? Um, Let's say one hour and 20 minutes, sorry, correction. Uh, one hour and 20 minutes. Uh, before your interview starts. Uh, and uh, then spend uh, one hour uh, practicing your speaking with other candidates. Uh, who are waiting for their exam. Uh, so don't be shy. Um, find other candidates. There will be other candidates there who are waiting for their exam. Most people do show up early. Take some speaking questions with you. I recommend having a piece of paper with two copies uh, so you can give one to the other person. Uh, with COVID, people are actually waiting outside of the exam center. Uh, so go up to someone. You'll notice they're just kind of waiting, waiting. Uh, so go up to them and say, hey, are you here for your IELTS speaking? And they'll probably say, yes, I am. And then you can say, would you mind practicing with me? I have some questions. I'm also here for my speaking. And most people will be very, very happy to practice with you. When I did the exam in February, I did this. I found someone they were really happy about it. They practiced. They felt better. I felt better, okay? So make sure to do that, okay? Uh, Rashid Ansari is asking, uh, in the speaking, can we refer to the examiner for any question? Like, even if you go there, you will not find anything interesting. Uh, you means the examiner. Um, that's awkward, Rashid. I probably wouldn't do that, okay? All right. Um, so, uh, spend that one hour and then you have to register. So you must register, uh, 20 minutes, uh, before your interview. And then your interview 
is 12 to 15 minutes, but usually it's, they say 12 to 15, but it's actually 12 minutes. Uh, I find it's closer to 12, sometimes even faster, okay? So go through these steps, okay? Uh, that will definitely help you. Uh, arriving one hour early, finding somebody to speak with before your exam will give you a really good chance to get a uh, half a band or even one band uh, higher, okay? So everybody got that? So it's it's not like I'm kind of suggesting that you get there an hour early and practice with someone. I'm really telling you to do this because uh, you can easily get half a band to one band better just by that one strategy, arriving early and practicing with another person. You will have more confidence after. You will be more relaxed when you meet the examiner um, because you just talk to a stranger. Say, hey, I'm here to do my speaking. Can you please practice with me before we go in and do this? Okay, everybody good on that? By the way, I saw somebody write that they got a great score on the IELTS and that's fantastic. Again, uh, send me um, a testimonial. Uh, where was that? That was Jay Gajar. Congratulations, Jay. I'm happy that you got a great score. Send me a testimonial. Send me an email. All right. So everybody good? Everybody uh, follow me on that tip. That's a really important one. Yeah, thumbs up, somebody, okay. All right. Uh, great, Fari Doon. Yes, you can use um, slang contractions like gotta, gonna, wanna. Uh, they're common parts of uh, natural speech. Just don't overuse them, okay. No, I see some thumbs up from Abhishek, Pawan Deep, David, a new arc. Excellent, all right. Good. All right. A Hub Khan, congratulations on your fantastic score. That's awesome. Okay, so keeping all of these in mind, let's get into it. Now, uh, as one student said before, hey, uh, when I did my introduction, um, the examiner didn't allow me to say, please call me this. Uh, but that doesn't matter. Pay attention to yourself only and be really fluent. Okay. Uh, Mohit, thank you for your super chat uh, donation. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, if you have a problem in writing, Mohit, please send me an email. This class is speaking, so I don't want to go off topic, but uh, you can always send me an email and I'll help you out. Okay. The email was at the beginning of the class. All right. Uh, so, uh, you get into your IELTS speaking interview. Now you're feeling confident. You warmed up with another student. You registered. You're using English the whole day. Uh, the examiner is there. The examiner meets you. The examiner says, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I will record this for marking and clerical uh, purposes. The exam is being conducted in Paris. The time is 14 o'clock. It's candidate number 73812. Uh, now we shall begin. I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. And they will sound kind of mechanical like this in most cases because they do this day in, day out with 20 students, okay? So again, don't worry about the examiner. Focus on yourself. You're there to do a job, okay? All right, so the question that the examiner will first ask you most likely is, uh, may I see your identification, please? Please show me your identification. During COVID, they will not actually touch your ID. They will just ask you to show it. So uh, may I see your identification, uh, please? Okay. All right. And here you want to show your fluency right away. Um, students, please don't spam the chat, Big Smoke. Let's get focused here. Okay. All right. Amit says, yes, here is my passport. Please have a look. Sure. Um, that's good. I would say that's the minimum that I would say for that question. Yes, here's my passport. Please have a look. Uh, Rajpreet says, yes, here it is. It's an okay answer, 
but it's not really fluent. You want to show fluency right away, not just for the examiner, but for yourself also. Okay. Uh, Jainil says, uh, yes, of course, here's my passport, which is new, so it's a bit tight on the binding. Uh, one second, so I can properly show my credentials. Yes, here you go. Uh, Jainil, that is beautiful. That's original. Yeah, and it's uh, I can empathize. So when you have a brand new passport, it's really tight. The binding, the binding is the part on the edge that holds together the passport, and it's kind of hard to open it to uh, the page with uh, your personal information. So uh, that's uh, it's great. I love it, Jainil. Okay, very good. It's clever. Sammy says, certainly here's my ID card, which I used to register for the exam. Please have a look at my details. Um, and my details are better on the last page. Okay. Uh, Rajveer says, yes, certainly here's my passport that I used to register for this exam a couple of weeks ago. Please take a look. Sure. Kashirsha says, uh, yes, here we go. Uh, that's my ID that I used to register for the exam. Please take a look. Very nice, Kashirsha. Nice and original. Okay. I can see that uh, you, you are investing time to explore your own natural diction, and that's fantastic. Great Faridun says, yes, of course. Here's the passport, which I used for registration. Please have a look. Yeah, those are all great. Okay, so yes. Uh, just a moment while I dig it out of my pocket. All right. Here are my uh, credentials on the last page. Uh, please take a look. Okay, so again, be natural, practice different ways of doing this. Uh, start with this. Every time that you practice for your speaking interview in your IELTS classes with your speaking partners, start with this step. Start with the may I see your identification and then, you know, role play. Yes, here it is. Please take a look. All right, repeat after me. So uh, again, speak and repeat. May I see your identification, please? Uh, yes, just a moment while I dig it out of my pocket. All right, uh, here are my credentials on the last page. Please take a look. Okay, uh, what is your full name? That's the next question. Make sure that you give them the same name that you have on the passport, okay? Uh, so what is your full name? Again, if the examiner cuts you off or starts asking you a question, don't worry about it, just move on. Okay, uh, Pawandeep says, my full name is Pawandeep Singh. Uh, my relatives call me Pawan. Uh, please call me that. Okay, good. Um, Deepika is asking, how should we address the examiner? Uh, you can call them sir or madam. It's fine. Yeah, you usually don't need to address them, Deepika, you'll find in the interview. Okay. All right, GHDVN says, my given name is Ghazal Devanian, uh, but please just call me Ghazal. Okay. Gorinandha says, my full name is Gorinandha. You can uh, call me Gori for short. Okay. Gori, if you use a short version of your name, just say for short. Okay. Uh, Amit says, my given name is Amit, and my last name is Kumar. Please call me by my first name, Amit. That works, okay? So first name, given name, those are synonyms. It's a nice paraphrase in that response. Uh, Bishal says, my full name is Bishal Aryal, um, but my nickname is Roman. My friends call me Roma. Please do the same. So Bishal finished that statement by saying, please do the same, okay? Uh, Rashid says, my full name is Rashid Raza Abdul Aziz Ansari, but you can call me by my first name, Rashid. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, you can say something like, um, my uh, given name is Cassandra, and my uh, family name is Davis. Um, please uh, just call me uh, Casey 
for short. Okay, so I'm um, just going with the girl's name uh, right now for this one. Uh, here we go. So repeat after me. What is your full name? My given name is Cassandra and my family name is Davis. Uh, please just call me Casey for short. Okay, Casey. Uh, so again, I will ask you a couple more questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? Very common question is, do you work or study? Okay, so make sure you're ready for this one and you can give a clear answer. Uh, again, if, um, if you say something like, my given name is Cassandra and my family name is Davis, and then right away the examiner says, okay, um, then uh, do you work or study? Then just go with it and answer that. Or you can still finish your sentence and you can still say, oh, just please call me Casey for short. Um, sorry, could you please repeat that question and then I'll gladly answer. Okay, so uh, be natural, be in that conversation. Okay, all right, so um, do you work or study? Currently, I'm studying, Pavan, is a bit too simple. Fahim, uh, also, I'm currently a student. What do you study? What are you learning? Give a little bit more information, okay? Let's see. We've got lots more answers. Fantastic. So, Debesh says, I have currently completed my bachelor degree in uh, BSc computing, and I have been working in IT um called cyber for the last two years in an it company called cyber for the past two years uh debesh just the end there needs a little bit of correction to be uh, more natural okay all right janiel says i both work and study i'm working as a technical illustrator at expert global and nowadays i've just started online english uh, tuition for this exam so i can study for my master's degree in Canada. Okay, Janiel, very nice. Nice fluency. So here again, give full sentences. Uh, Shoira says, currently I'm, I'm unemployed. Half a year ago, the company I had been working at for many years um, started massive layoffs. One day I was made redundant among others. Uh, Shoira, yeah, that's good. I think the last sentence is a bit awkward. One day I was made redundant among others. You, you already said that you're unemployed. Um, so it's clear that you were laid off, okay? So don't overspeak, students. Don't don't overspeak just for the sake of speaking. Be fluent, but make sure that your sentences have value, okay? You're giving new information throughout the speaking. That's very important. Hang Van says, not only do I study at the University of Economics and Business in Hanoi, but I'm also working as an English teaching assistant, uh, about 15 hours each week. Okay, Hung Van, uh, good. Notice how I gave a little bit more detail about where that university or which university is. I just came up with one um, based on your name. And then also I gave some quantitative information. So I'm working as an English teaching assistant, about 15 hours each week, okay? Abhishek says, I'm currently doing um, both work at uh, an IT company as a senior business consultant for these past eight years, and I'm pursuing my MBA in IT from Delhi University. Very good, Abhishek. So, uh, yeah, so I am both <clears throat> working and I'm a student. Uh, I have been employed as a marketing strategist at a uh, social media firm and I've been uh, studying English for this exam over the past six months at a uh, local language school. All right. Um, so yeah, be fluent, okay? Um, use fluent, quantitative language, give new information. That's really important, okay?
give new information. Avoid repeating yourself. Okay, very important. All right, here we go. Um, so repeat after me. Do you work or study? I am both working and I'm a student. I've been employed as a marketing strategist at a social media firm. And I've been studying English for this exam over the past six months at a local language school. Okay, fantastic. Those lessons are paying off. Uh, notice the paraphrasing, okay? And right away, I'm introducing complex grammar. I have been employed. Uh, what kind of grammar is this? I have been employed, okay? So in the IELTS speaking, you're being marked on coherence, fluency, okay? So are you clear? Are you able to speak continuously? So coherence and fluency. You're being marked on grammatical range, okay? So how many different kinds of grammar you can uh, use easily in your communication. You're being marked on grammatical accuracy. So how accurate is your grammar? Are you using the past tense when you should be or the uh, perfect tense or past participle when you should be? Um, so how accurate is your grammar? Lexical resource, so how many words or word range? So are you switching up your words like working and employed? studying, learning, okay? Um, and uh, also a little bit on pronunciation. Not much, just enough to make sure that you're comprehensible. Um, so what's, which grammar is this pop quiz? I have been employed. I'm sure some of you will get it. Uh, very good, Sita. So Sita BC says, it's present perfect passive. Yeah. Exactly. Kashir Shayat's it's passive, right? I have been employed by a company, by a social media firm. So it's present perfect passive. Okay. That's the grammar there. Okay. So showing that kind of grammar gets you points. All right. You want to show complex grammar. Next question. Uh, what do you do at weekends? If you're doing your exam in Canada or US, they might say on the weekend. Okay, um, so in the UK, they say at weekends. Uh, what do you do at weekends? All right. Pawandeep says, at the weekend, I'm going with my friends to the beach in my city. We are playing uh, cricket at the beach. Okay, Pawandeep, when's the last time you did that? Um, give me an example. Ozoda pronunciation is not really vital, okay? You can have a thick accent and still get a great score as long as I can understand what you're saying. Uh, let's see. Janiel says, well, on my off days, uh, usually Saturdays, I hang out with my friends. And on Sundays, I f uh, follow my pastimes to unwind. Uh, just last on the last holiday, I uh, sketched a futuristic car. Okay, Janiel, good. Um, don't say unwind my mind. That's awkward, okay? Uh, then it sounds like you take your brain and you untwist it because it's all twisted up. Um, just to unwind, okay? We don't add any phrases to that. So I like to unwind on the weekend. Unwind just means relax. We don't say relax my mind. It's awkward, okay? So careful with that. Avoid awkward expressions that are unnatural, right? Uh, Ashish Turan says, at my weekends, I um, relax a little by watching movies, uh, spending time with my family, uh, cleaning my vehicles for the next day, and I spend quality time with my dog as well. I take Sparky to uh, the park for a walk. Okay, Ashish, uh, same thing as what I said to Janiel. Be really careful with this uh, relax my mind. Um, okay, so... Okay, <clears throat> this is not natural.
It's awkward. Okay. Uh, you will not hear this in English. Relax my mind. Unwind my mind. It's it's awkward English. All right. Careful with that. I've seen other students do it as well. That's why I took a moment to uh, make a point of that. Um, so don't do that. Okay. Keep it simpler. Okay. Uh, Le Pei Yang says. Uh, Le Pei Yan says during. Uh, during um, <clears throat> the weekend, I usually go for a hike in the mountains uh, to photograph some vistas as well as flora and fauna. I like the beauty of Mother Nature. Last weekend, I caught a glimpse of a blackhead bull. Okay, Lepe, very good. Uh, I made a few corrections there. Uh, students, it is the weekends, so make sure that you actually refer to that. Okay, so, um, well, on Saturdays, um, I like to be active. I like to either go for a hike or play basketball with friends. Uh, and on Sundays, I like to chill out at home and re-energize for the upcoming uh, work week. Uh, this last Sunday, I um, sat on my couch most of the day reading books and watching uh, Netflix. All right. <clears throat> so... Uh, what do you do at weekends? Uh, well, on Saturdays, I like to be active. I like to either go for a hike or play basketball with friends. And on Sundays, I like to chill out at home and re-energize for the upcoming work week. This last Sunday, I sat on my couch most of the day reading books and watching Netflix. Okay, um, so natural answer explanation example using a correlative conjunction either or okay um, really focus on these correlative conjunctions when you're practicing they definitely help bump up your score okay so correlative conjunctions uh, like um, either or neither nor both and uh, not only, but also, whether, or. Um, these emphasize your points and increase your band score. So make sure to uh, practice them, okay? Uh, notice how I'm including lots of them as well. And again, weekends, I break it down, right? So weekends are Saturdays, Sundays. For some people in some cultures, it's Fridays and Saturdays. Up to you. Uh, just be really clear with it. Again, that's quantitative language. So that's something I can measure. In fact, my weekends are kind of Monday or Tuesday. So if I were to get this question on the IELTS, I would say, well, my weekends... Um, although for people it's usually Saturday, Sundays. For me, it's Monday, Tuesday because I work Wednesday to Sunday. And so I would say, and on Monday and Tuesday, I like to do this, okay? So, um, but if you want to keep it simple, don't overcomplicate, then just say Saturdays and Sundays, okay? And answer, explain, example. That's the key, all right? That's what you want to do to get those really, really high band scores, all right? Okay, um, let's keep going. Ali, uh, Ibrahim, if I missed your answer, don't worry about it. Keep writing, keep practicing, and I will get to as many answers as I can, okay? All right, so at this point, the examiner will introduce some kind of topic. They always, you know, don't be weirded out. Some of the questions can be kind of strange. Um, so they'll say, let's talk about computers, uh, how often do you use a computer? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So how often do you use a computer? Benad uh, says, well, I frequently use a computer um, for doing programming as well as learning new skills. 
Uh, also, I take online classes from popular education websites such as Udemy and uh, Coursera. Okay, and Binod, maybe you can check us out at ahelp.com for some classes as well. <laughs> All right. Um, but not good. Um, whenever you start with a qualitative answer, like frequently use the computer, follow it with a quantitative answer, like uh, five hours a day. Okay. So, well, I frequently use a computer mm, about five hours a day uh, for learning programming as well as new skills. Also, I take online classes from popular education websites. So add that quantitative information. Okay really emphasizing that especially for part one you want to get these going uh, so that uh, you use them in part two and part three as well okay Anjali don't use the word things okay um, Erica I think that's for the previous question on weekends well I try to be socially active on Saturdays and chill out at home and recharge during Sundays yesterday I met with friends at a coffee shop to talk about our summer plans. Um, Erica, that's a great answer. Uh, catch up to this one, okay? All right. Uh, Sir Polyglot says, well, as a polyglot, I use um, the computer for communication with natives to improve my speaking skills. I use it about one to two hours uh, per day. Okay, very good. Throw an example in there. Um, potato op, potato op says, well, I frequently use my computer for watching movies and playing games. Just yesterday, I watched a couple of movies and the rest of the time I played some online games with my friends. All right, not bad. Um, quantitative information, how many hours? Okay. Uh, Anjali, don't use the word things, okay? Transactions and other household things online. What household things, okay? The word things doesn't make sense to the examiner or me or anyone else. Um, Abhishek says, Abhishek Verma says, well, I work as a systems administrator and my f profession glues me to the computer all day. I must say computers are my life and I earn my bread and butter by using the computer. So I would say that I use a computer 10 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. Again, students, don't forget that quantitative language. That's what I was uh, referring to by saying quantitative language. So how often um, I often, uh, let's take the word often and make it frequently. I frequently uh, use a computer, whether uh, it's my desktop or my uh, smartphone, which is also a type of computer, I would say that I spend at least uh, eight hours each day um, doing both work and um, watching movies or uh, playing games. Uh, yesterday, I spent many hours uh, <clears throat> answering emails and um, playing Earthstone. It's a strategy game. Sure. All right. Um, so uh, here we go. Uh, repeat after me. How often do you use a computer? I frequently use a computer, whether it's my desktop or my smartphone. I would say that I spend at least eight hours each day doing both work and watching movies or playing games. Yesterday, I spent many hours answering emails and playing Hearthstone, which is a strategy game. Okay. Uh, sure. Next question. What do you use the computer for? Okay. Now, some examiners, uh, if you give that information, like I said, uh, answering emails for work, uh, for games, they might skip this question. 
but some examiners might just ask it anyway and see if you can give more information or see if you can explain that you just talked about that. So what do you use the computer for? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay. Uh, simple Tech says, I regularly use my computer for almost uh, anything I do in my business. I study with my computer. I watch movies on my PC. Um, it's not wrong to say that I use my computer at least 10 hours each day. Okay, Simple Tech, you just answered that in the previous question, so don't repeat yourself, okay? All right. Um, Jitesh. Kapapara says, generally I use my computer for watching games, playing games, and other entertainment purposes. Entertainment purposes. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Suresh Goyal says, um, or Suresh, I see that you're asking a question. Suresh is asking, uh, would you advise me using my own simple daily vocabulary, which I feel comfortable with, uh, more than fancy words um, used by native speakers? Uh, Suresh, definitely use words that you are comfortable with in the sense that you're going to be accurate and coherent and comprehensible. So uh, it's very important that your answers are clear and easy to understand and you're not making grammatical mistakes, okay? Uh, so don't use fancy words if you're making mistakes because then you will get a low score, okay? It doesn't matter if you're using fancy words if your communication is not clear. All right. Uh, Vishnu Vardhan says, as I previously mentioned, I use my computer to ensure the quality of the products and also for troubleshooting. Moreover, I use my desktop for watching a uh, web series on Netflix. Okay, Vishnu, good, yeah. Um, so um, what do you use uh, your computer for? Aside from what I had just mentioned, emails and games, I also uh, use my computer uh, for communication uh, with uh, software like Skype or Zoom to hold uh, meetings and discuss business strategy. Um, as well as for personal errands like online banking or even uh, booking travel for my family. Uh, just last uh, week, I booked a flight to Calgary to visit some family there in the summer. Okay. Um, so again, additive information. Don't just repeat yourself. Always add information. So here we go. Repeat after me. What do you use the computer for? Aside from what I had just mentioned, emails and games, I also use my computer for communication with software like Skype or Zoom to hold meetings and discuss business strategy, as well as for personal errands like online banking or even booking travel for my family. Just last week I booked a flight to Calgary to visit some family there in the summer. Okay, um, And I don't want to repeat words like family. So instead of family here, ideally I would say something like relatives. Okay. All right. Uh, let's jump a question or two here. Here we go. Uh, let's jump to this one. So questions get a bit more and more complex as you progress, okay? Uh, the One way that you can see this is with the grammar. So here this question is in present perfect. Has the way you use a computer changed in the past 10 years? Right away you want to answer in present perfect. Yes, it has. Uh, this is really important, OK? 
Okay, um, just a simple start like this can help you get a better band score because you're showing the examiner right away that you recognize the present perfect grammar in the question. Has the way you used a or has the way you use a computer changed? Okay, it's present perfect. I recognize the present perfect. Yes, it has. Okay. So respond with the present perfect. All right, Robbie Dong says, definitely there are lots of changes in using the computer. No present perfect, Robbie. Previously, I used computer for communication, storage, and official task, but nowadays, computer is one of my indispensable devices. Robbie, no present perfect. Okay. You want more present perfect. Yes, Caldeep, it's great to see many people in the class today. All right. Ryan, welcome. So again, just simply, yes, it has. So right away, and watch this, double up on the present perfect, okay? To improve your score. So yes, it has. I have... Uh, been using uh, my smartphone much more these days uh, than a decade ago, as where back in 2011, I used uh, my PC for most of my computer related work. However, with uh, advancements in mobile uh, technology, the my uh, smartphone has become uh, a primary uh, device. Okay, so I'm just coming up with it here. Importantly, though, um, what I want to show you here is the double up on the present perfect. This is a great way to bump your score up a bit uh, as far as grammatical range and accuracy. Okay, so has the way you use a computer changed in the past 10 years? Yes, it has. I have been uh, using my. Uh, is everybody clear on that tip? Again, that's a very important tip, like that tip that I gave you at the beginning of the class to show up one hour before your exam to start practicing with other candidates. This is another really important one. Use the question, and when you hear these present perfect questions, double up on the present perfect so that the examiner's like, oh, okay, this student can use the present perfect. All right, and I see Reggie is going, all right, Kashish is going, okay, clear. Um, very good. And uh, Muhammad, uh, don't spam Muhammad. Muhammad Hassan says, yes, it has. Over the decade, the computer has significantly changed. Uh, computers these days are more slim and small and convenient to take with myself anywhere. Muhammad, the question is you has the way you use, not people, but you. So make sure that in part one, you're staying uh, in the first person, you're talking about yourself. Yes, it has, the way I use a computer has changed, okay? All right. Darbar Tanvir says, yes, it has changed. Um, Using the computer uh, in the past 10 years, it has changed through the complexity and ease of use. These days, I use my smartphone, and I also have been using my laptop much more so I can uh, do my work from anywhere at any time. Okay. All right. Good. Angelo uh, Cristiano says, yes, it certainly has. It has changed in terms of the applications. Back in the days, I found it perplexing because there was 
less applications to be installed. So I have been making a lot more use of my computer uh, for communication, navigation, as well as entertainment. All right. Good, Angelo. Good. So you're doubling up on that present perfect. Uh, fantastic. All right. Yash Singh says, yes, it has. I uh, used to use my personal desktop for gaming purposes only, but now I have started using uh, my laptop not only to play games, but also for net banking as well as for education purposes. Very good, Yash. That's that double up on the present perfect. Um, Rajveer says, yes, it has changed a lot. Around 2011, I used to use my computer for study and entertainment only. However, these days I have been using my laptop uh, to carry out my work assignments. Very nice, Rajveer. Nice double up on that present. Perfect. Very good, everyone. Okay. Um, so uh, here we go. Let's do one more question for today. Um, if you could change anything about the computer that you use, what would it be and why? <laughs> All right. So answer this question again. Use the condition very clearly. So given the chance to upgrade my computer, I would install a new graphics uh, card because the current one is having difficulty playing a 4K video. Unfortunately, the cost of uh, graphics cards is through the roof these days because of their high uh, demand in crypto uh, currency. So I'm gonna have to wait a bit. All right, um, so answer this question for me. If you could change anything about the computer that you use, what would it be and why? So the explanation, okay? Um, given the chance to upgrade my computer, I would install a new graphics card because the current one is having difficulty playing 4K video. Unfortunately, the graphics cards, uh, the cost of graphics cards is through the roof these days uh, because of their high demand in cryptocurrency. So I'm going to have to wait a bit. And uh, it's kind of true on my end. Um, so anybody got some ideas for good graphics cards at a good price, let me know. Um, all right. Let's see some of your answers. Uh, Jitesh Kapapara says, when it comes to change, uh, when it comes to changing my computer, I would like to enhance the security because there are many uh, kinds of fraud which is happening and I'm a bit paranoid that some hacker is going to take advantage of my personal information. Uh, Jitesh um, about the computer that you use, not people. So again, it's about you. Okay. Rajveer says, given a chance to alter my computer, I would definitely replace my hard disk with a solid state device as it is extremely fast. Uh, this was, I can use my laptop more, uh, so I can use my laptop more productively and improve my user experience. We also call it the UX. Okay, Jainil says, given the chance to improve my computer, I would install extended RAM and boost my laptop so I can easily accomplish my tasks without irritating uh, delay times um, watching uh, software load. Okay, yeah. Uh, Eunice says, if I added a feature to my computer, this would definitely be a regulation practice regarding the light and radiation. With this, I aim to keep personal and mental health in balance. Um, there's um, a piece of soft software, Eunice, called Flux, F-L-U-X, uh, I believe that can do just that for you. It's called Flux. It's free. 
Uh, Muhammad Hassan says, if I would get a chance, then I will certainly upgrade uh, the screen and the layout and toolbars. I think it hasn't been updated in a while, and I would bring a bit more diversity in these to make it more practical, more efficient, and easier on the eyes. Okay. All right. Uh, Honey says, given the chance, I would install a solid state drive in my laptop as my laptop is very slow and it's becoming a hindrance uh, for my work. The new SSD will improve my working speed. Yeah, so you're getting a bottleneck, bottleneck um, in your hard drive. Sure, solid state drives are good. Um, absolutely. All right, everyone. So that's how you do it. Lots of tips for today's class. I will be back tomorrow at the same time with task two writing and a little bit earlier, our members will have a reading class. So, uh, make sure to come back tomorrow for that. If you have questions about IELTS or English, we are here to help you. Adrian at aehelp.com. And uh, if you want to get all of our videos uh, and practice exams and applications, we are world leaders when it comes to IELTS training. Uh, visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gileshelp.com for general IELTS. Our websites look like this. This is the general IELTS with the green background. Click that big red button to join the premium package. We are British Council IELTS Registration Center and agents. Our general, or our, sorry, our academic IELTS website looks like this, and you can click that big red button or this one to join our premium package uh, there. That's it for today, everyone. Great job. Um, there was a lot of fantastic response in the chat today. It was beautiful to see. Keep up the good work. You're all brilliant people. Keep pushing forward. Stay productive. Stay optimistic. And hopefully I will see you tomorrow. Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world. I'm Adrian signing out from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. Bye for now.